Hi everybody, welcome back, and if this is your first time, welcome. My name is Max Haddad, and today I'm going to talk about some of my favorite books. I should be able to make a video called my top three book recommendations, but I can't do that. I started thinking about it, and I realized that not only do I like these books for different reasons? And so they're not, it's like apples and oranges, but also I am fairly confident that I'm completely forgetting <laughs> like multiple books. When I was in prison, I read a book basically every day. A lot of them were just okay. Some of them were amazing and some of them changed my life. So I wanted to talk about two of the books that I read in prison that changed the way that I was thinking. Um, well, one of them did, the other one was just really, really cool and, uh, talk about, uh, a book that is not that cool, not that exciting, but has had a huge impact on me. And I didn't really realize it till making this video. And then the book I'm going to start with, which had an impact on me because I read it with my mom, which is Harry Potter. Now, Harry Potter is not one book. It's seven books. And if I'm being honest with you, I only read the first five. As the books were released, I was getting older. Harry was getting older. Hermione, shibbity dibbity, we all grew up. I got to an age where I didn't want to lay in my parents' bed and read with them. Uh, I started realizing that basically Voldemort comes back. They kill Voldemort. It's never going to happen again. And then the next book, Voldemort comes back for some reason. Don't worry. We killed him. It's never going to happen again. Now Voldemort's back. So... I'm not saying the books aren't wonderful. I'm saying I was at an age where I was like, eh, too good for it. But the impact that the books had on me was that reading those with my mom convinced me that reading was worthwhile. It makes me, made me, taught me to associate reading with relaxation, learning, love, familial love, um, imagination, all of that. So reading that with my mom along with some books by Brian Jocks. He wrote Redwall. It's basically a bunch of different stories, not Redwall. He wrote a bunch of stories about animals that have been anthropomorphized and are warriors. Okay, but imagination. Ah, so reading Harry Potter with my mom set me up, I think, as a lifelong learner. Someone who enjoys learning, it's not like a rare thing. I'm not like, yeah, me and the other seven lifelong learners. It's not like that. I just, I enjoy learning. I wouldn't feel comfortable in my day-to-day -day life if I didn't feel like I was getting better at something, if I was learning something new. The fact that school ended, and I didn't go to college, mostly because of addiction, but also I'm just not wired well for school. But that didn't mean I didn't like to learn. And I do. And I credit that to the time I spent hanging out with my mom at night, reading the Harry Potter books. And really, they, they are good. I would argue that Lord of the Rings, the movies, are better than the books. I would not say that about Harry Potter. The second book I'm going to tell you about is the one that I read during prison that blew my mind, okay? And not in a dramatic, emotional way, but I had zero expectations of this book. I had seen the movie. Almost everyone's seen the movie. If you can guess the book that I'm going to say before I say it, I will be amazed. Pause here if you want to try. It's The Exorcist by William Peter Blatty. Never. I spent, first of all, 27 years of my life not even knowing that it was a movie based on a book. Then read it expecting it to be some really dry like boring rendition of an exorcist i mean like i had read uh dracula the original dracula and it was like okay like whatever how did this start this giant cultural impact of vampire shit like dracula bored the hell out of me except for maybe five pages i read the exorcist expecting the same thing and it was incredible it was scary but more than it was scary it was silly and the characters were so believable it was you couldn't help but feel that these were real people the story was even though it's a short book the story was complex you were completely engrossed in the world 
I don't typically read horror. I love horror movies. They're my favorite movies to watch, but books, that's typically not the case. But this showed me that horror books, or at least books from genres that I don't normally dig into, can satisfy and scratch the itch that I have and is the reason I read these other books. You know, like I learned something about the 70s, the era that the book was written in. Uh, I learned something about being a single mother. Uh, I learned something about the priesthood. There's a lot of priests in The Exorcist because that's who exercises demons. What I didn't think would be the case is that The Exorcist is not just about a little girl possessed doing a strange crab walk and wedding her nightgown. <laughs> it's a love story. It caught me so off guard. No spoilers in this video. Honestly, out of all these books, and I know it's still, I, like, people aren't going to want to read it because they're like, well, The Exorcist, it's not for me. It's for everybody. That's what blew my mind. I figured this was going to be a very niche book that only a few people are going to like. And, like, I'm not really big into, like, religious symbolism and exorcism stuff anyways, even in the horror movies I watch. But I was like, well, let's try it. It had something for everybody. And every something it had for everybody was so well done. William Peter Blatty only has a few books. I think I read one of the other ones. I can't remember it if I even did. This is so, so good. I recommend that to anybody. The other book that I read in prison that really changed me, changed the way I thought about stuff was The Year of Magical Thinking by uh, Joan Didion. Basic synopsis without giving anything away is it's a woman whose child is sick. So yes, 100% trigger warning. This book will upset some people. It upset me and I don't have kids. But in a way, that's the point because it's a woman in grief who keeps experiencing tragedy after tragedy. And it's real. It happened. It's not fiction for the sake of making a point. This happened to a woman. It's her experience of her daughter being fatally ill, terminally ill, I guess is the word for it. And that not being the end of it, that there being other awful things happening, but her survival through it. Uh, and it's, it's like this purple, this purple, Jesus, Jiminy Christ. It's this perfect combination of prose and poetry, the way that she spins the, the yarn. It is so good. Um, magical thinking basically being this grief pushing her back into this childlike thinking that uh, we can impact the world with our thoughts. And I don't mean childlike, like stupid, uninformed, ignorant. I mean, bright, imaginative, the world is your oyster while she was going through this grief. So I said, Trigger warning, it's because you will grieve with her. You'll celebrate with her, you'll cry with her. It's one of those. And I don't typically have that experience when I read. I can empathize, I, I like I get it, but I don't dip low emotionally when they do. I just understand it. But this book took me on the roller coaster. The Year of Magical Thinking by Joan Didion is Definitely top three for me, probably, maybe. The next book that I wanted to mention, boring, honestly, very little excitement in it, except for the very, very back of the book after the last 164 pages. Some of you out there are already going to know what I'm talking about because I said 164 pages. It's the big book of Alcoholics Anonymous. I never considered that this book had had an impact on me. I basically stopped thinking about it like a book. It's what the Alcoholics Anonymous program is based on. Uh, all the steps come out of it. It's half origin story of AA from uh, Dr. Bob and Bill W, uh, the, the co-founders of AA, and half instructive textbook. It's not made to be Wow, exciting. Oh, what's going to happen next? That's not the point. It's for if you're a drunk and you want to stop being a drunk, here's how you do it. But I read that thing in groups by myself at night when I couldn't sleep, all of that. 
for 13 years all year for 13 years use maybe even read it while i'm using because i'm miserable get sober read it because i want to stay sober all of that non-stop go to rehab hey guys we're going to read the big book today have you heard about it yeah i basically have it tattooed under my eyelids i have read it so so much so for me to make this list of books that have impacted me books that i really made a serious change in my life i can't help but say the big book of alcoholics anonymous now i don't credit it with with saving me um but there are lots of things a lot of uh, a lot of ways that i interact with people that i learned from going to aa from taking instruction out of the big book by the way we call it the big book because it's the biggest conference approved literature that AA has not because it's it's sort of like our bible kind of thing even though I don't mega affiliate with AA anymore um it's meant to be tongue-in-cheek and it's just become uh part of the vernacular it's not intended to be like don't read the bible this is the real bible it's it's not like that now I'm thinking I'm going to make this uh, a series of videos, I guess, sort of like the people in prison. Um, I, a mini series, like three, four videos. Um, I can't, this is like, I'm not, it's not a book channel, right? I'm not just going to constantly talk about books that I'm reading, but I know that there's going to be some that I'm kicking myself for later that I didn't mention, but at first glance, and I sort of just said, you know what, whatever books bubble up to the surface, your brain, just write those down and talk about. So I wrote down those names. Oh, I forgot one. Woo! Skeleton Crew by Stephen King. Now, I swear, I, I said I don't read horror. I, I guess maybe I lied. I don't know. Skeleton Crew by Stephen King is a series of short stories. I can't remember if 1408 is in it. That one's definitely worth checking out. The Mist is in it, which was made into a pretty upsetting movie in a good way. Uh, and it's a, definitely a great story. But the story in it that impacted me the most, I'm sorry that this is being tacked on last. It's proof that I don't write a script for these videos, I guess. There's a story in Skeleton Crew by Stephen King called The Jaunt. The Jaunt is about a scientist who discovers a way to travel insanely long distances through space instantaneously if you're asleep. So you become, you get anesthetized, you're pushed through, you arrive safely on the other side. It's like you blinked, right? Now, the son of the scientist, as they're going to the, this planet to uh, live, you know, some chosen people are colonizing this new planet. He, his wife, uh, I believe their daughter and his son are going. Uh, daughter goes through, wife goes through or something like that. They get anesthetized. He goes through, gets anesthetized. Son is last. Um, they get to the other side and he, all he hears is his wife screaming and his son had held his breath and acted asleep before they pushed him into this teleporter right just an adventurous troublemaking little kid all his son says to him the father is longer than you think dad longer than you think and claws out his own eyes turns out what his son experienced was one million years of blank white space unable to sleep no hunger no anything just existence without movement or rest or anything for a million years now i should have said spoiler alert maybe i'll add it yeah i probably will regardless it's worth reading because i'm not doing it justice there are so many details that make it so much creepier and i didn't think about it until now but there's definitely some parallel there with being in prison but i didn't do a million year sentence so i'm not going to sit here and act like pity party victim regardless those are books that i would recommend your magical thinking exorcist harry potter you guys have probably already read skeleton crew by Stephen king big book if you're a drunk otherwise if you're curious go ahead if your loved ones are attending aa or na it's probably worth giving a look as well Maybe it'll give you some insight, but hope you all have a wonderful day. I'll talk to you soon. Thank you. Bye.